can see, I'm more for comfort, not speed. Uh, Aludeep Sanyal, uh, he's the CEO for LifePass, who will be talking about AI in preventative care using a wearable by profiling live leaf, the world's first ever non-invasive continuous glucose monitor. Please welcome Aludeep to the stage. Thanks. Thanks for the nice introduction and uh, hello everybody, good afternoon. Uh, so, what we're going to talk about today is that uh, one of the uh, leading problems uh, in today's healthcare, oh, the audio is not you know, getting it. Okay. It's good now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, one of the leading problems in today's healthcare is effective uh, daily monitoring, management, and treatment and therapy of different chronic diseases. And, and we know that the chronic disease population across the world is on sharp rise. More than 70% of the, of the total healthcare spent by all the countries is on chronic disease treatment and management. And the problem is severe partly because more than 90% of the, of the daily care is on the responsibility of the individual who is suffering through the disease. So we clearly need an, a, an effective uh, you know, a way of uh, daily monitoring, treatment, management, and therapy compliance of different chronic diseases. So today, in this talk, I would like to present an interesting approach of using artificial intelligence in preventative care and chronic disease management using an available device. In the end of my talk, I actually want to show a prototype device that our company just released uh, last month. And, uh, you know, and I would like to show an example user interface on how uh, simple it can be for daily life for in different individuals. So when we talk about chronic diseases, one of the first diseases that comes to our mind is diabetes. The disease has a prolific impact on life, not only because of the disease itself, but what it also does from many other uh, comorbidities and co-diseases. For example, many debilitating conditions like um, brain stroke, um, a heart attack, a blindness, or you know, arm amputation may happen because of diabetes. Poor management of diabetes. Let me put it that way. So, diabetes is a worldwide pandemic today. More than 422 million people have been suffering, and clearly there is a huge lack in the current monitoring systems and devices that people use on their home on daily basis. And because of that, worldwide, less than 35% therapy compliance for diabetes, which leads to sudden exacerbation and flaring of the disease and other comorbidities and many devastating events. So clearly, we do have a demanding requirement here to do something better. So I would like to go with a, a quick comparison of different systems that we have in place today. There's an age-old fingerprint device people have been using for probably more than a couple of centuries now. Very discomforting. People hate to prick. Many people stop picking in the middle of their you know, disease spectrum. And the therapy compliance sharply goes down. There is a more recent advent of the continuous glucose monitors, which reduces the pain. You insert a sensor under, under the skin you know, and you, you replace it every other week. Clearly, you don't need to break every time. But the issue is, it doesn't report the blood glucose number in real time, simply because of physics. The, the glucose from blood takes about 10 to 15 minutes to permeate to interstitial fluid from where the, the glucose measurement happens for this uh, continuous glucose monitoring devices. The third one is actually our device where we are trying to come up with a continuous glucose monitor which is completely non-invest, completely passive. And I'm actually wearing the prototype device that I'm gonna show later today that how simply we can uh, enhance the quality of life of these millions of people. So our device is completely non-invest, continuous. It reports real-time blood glucose number. And very uh, you know, competitive on the cost perspective. Simply because the other two alternatives come with a very high cost coming from the consumers. And we don't have any consumer. You buy a device, you use it for five years, 10 years, who knows how long. 
We haven't even got to that point. My point is, there's almost zero consumer for this product. So going a little you know, further and introducing the technology, we primarily employ a couple of well-known sensors. One is a, you know, a, a, a spectroscopic sensor or an optical sensor. And another one is a very commonly known motion sensor, a, co a combination of uh, accelerometer, gyroscope, and magnetometer. So what we do out of this, we measure five key physiological parameters, not only blood glucose. The, the reason I started with blood glucose is that that's a body grail problem known to the community. And um, it, it's a living problem for us that we are trying to tackle. But we don't only measure blood glucose, we also measure blood pressure, heart rate, heart rate variability, oxygen saturation, and, and, and respiration. So collectively, this is a good profile of your daily you know, quality of life, your well-being. On top of that, since we have a platform, meaning that we have a wearable, uh, Bluetooth connected, uh, you know, uh, Android and iOS app, way back, and back in cloud, we actually collect a lot of auxiliary information, like your meal pattern, your hydration pattern, your daily health symptoms, like right now you are feeling, you know, palpitated, or you're nauseated. You just cannot get that on that. And, uh, you know, your activity pattern actually comes directly from the motion sensor that we have on the device. So collectively, it creates a data platform. And what data platform? It's a daily well-being data platform. So if you look at the health data analytics spectrum as it exists today, we have genomics data, we have EMR data, we have uh, you know, Medicare services data. What is missing is a big important data piece, which is how you are living your daily life. You don't live your life in hospital. You live your life in your daily home settings. There is unfortunately no data today that exists from that daily life settings. So we want to address that back home. So if you look at the entire data science perspective today, you see a plethora of different data signatures from outside the skin. But you hardly see any data signature from inside the skin. Why is it so? Because the traditional inside the skin data signatures come from expensive bulky equipments from hospitals which they do not share, share with anybody. We want to address that problem. We want to come up with a simple, inexpensive, non-invasive means to collect this physiological data on daily life settings and then you basically address that accessibility problem. Now, what we create out of that is a data platform where multiple pipelines come to our Data, data, data engine, the life leaf analytics engine. We bring in the physiological parameters to our own variable. We work closely with the clinical community. We get a lot of know-how brought into the perspective. We also get the meal pattern, hydration, activity, uh, you know, daily health symptoms from the, the, the app itself. So collectively, it's a much enriched annotated data set. And then we have a a three-pound simple uh, platform, but we have the wearable at the, at the edge, and then we have Bluetooth connected app and cloud. Also, it's, it's a connected community with that. You, you, can, you can connect your loved ones, you can connect your doctors, you can connect emergency response with your system. The outlet is multiple different applications. It can be on the personalized well-being management, it can be, uh, the data can be used in the, in the in better understanding of the insurance uh, spectrum or the nutrition spectrum, or the fitness spectrum, you know, to name it. So, this annotation part, I wanted to uh, explain further with this clumsy, you know, uh, figure that I made few, just a few days back this presentation. So, you have the, the basic physiological data collected in a fairly continuous way across the day. And then, you are annotating your meal, your hydration, your health acti you know, activity, your health symptoms, on top of that data. So effective outcome is from, from any given snapshot of a, of a, of a window of time, <clears throat> you can get much more insights by doing causal analytics on your meal, your hydration, your activity, your daily health. So you can get a lot of insights about yourself. Honestly speaking, I personally think we don't know more than 95% of what we can know today. So we have a, a big, scenario open in front of us. And not only Light Plus will be solving all this, we want to actually give the data to other 
you know, community as well as a platform provider. And other companies can also analyze and take our data and analyze and come up with many different insights that we don't know. So going a little deeper into the technology itself, uh, as I said, that we start with an optical signal called photoplethysmograph, very well known in the clinical settings. People use it for, um, you know, primarily oxygen saturation and heart rate measurement, outpatient, inpatient, uh, uh, you know, hospital settings. We start from there. What we know is that when we send photons of multiple different wavelengths through skin, it goes, penetrates through different layers of depth, and part of it gets absorbed, part of it gets scattered back, we collect the response. The response contains a teeny signature of glucose, but it's really teeny, meaning in a, in a scale of 100, it would probably point 0.1. So until very recently, there was no effective computational means through which we could amplify the signature of glucose out of this extremely noisy output signal. So with the recent advent of the sophisticated deep learning techniques, we are hopeful that we will be able to do a better job. The jury is still out there, let me put it back. So that's the technology and we do multiple stages of learning. First stage is that we are right now deployed in multiple different clinical trials across different uh, sites in the world. We work with Mayo Clinic, our CMO is a clinical faculty of neurology of UCR Biomedical School. We work with UCSF, being in California. We also work with hospitals in India, uh, in, in ASEAN region, in South Africa. We are opening in Japan as well, looking for partners in Europe. So goal is to collect data, raw data, with the, the reference data, the fingerprint data for glucose from more than 1,000, 1,500 people, maybe about 20,000 data points, sliced and diced, then we can effectively come up with a, a, a reasonably accurate, meaning about 10 to 15% of uh, you know, a glucose estimate. That's our target. And that's the first step. So when we roll out the product, it will be about 15% off. Then as a second level, on our app, and I'll show you in a, in, a, in, a, in a user interface also, we have a calibrate feature. You can measure your fingerprint number, if you are using fingerprint today, you can measure that number, put that, maybe take other parameters as well by reference means like a blood pressure monitor and all, and submit. It connects the watch, collects the raw of, uh, you know, uh, sensor data, packs with the, with the reference data and sends it to cloud. Multiple such data sets, analyze, and create an updated computational model. That model gets downloaded back to your watch, and that effectively improves the performance, the accuracy of the results over time. By the way, that's one interesting topic for FDA. And without going into further detail, I can tell that I think, and again, Julie is out there too, but I think for the model update, we don't need a new 510K application FDA. The recent publication by FDA actually pointed out that way, but we are deeply engaged with FDA ourselves, and we are still figuring it out whether we need a new 510 application for every model update or not. The third stage that happens is also very interesting, and we actually patented this approach. Computationally, it's, a new, it's not a new thing, but in the context, it's a brand new application. Let's say, in the cloud, we create multiple subclusters based on people's age group, gender, ethnic background, and other parameters. So consider the, the rightmost subcluster, where, where the, their B and C are the existing users of the cluster. A is a new user who is adding new data points by fingerprint and other means. So what's happening is that, that using those data points, the baseline computational model of the entire cluster is getting updated. And that model is tested on the regression suite of both B and C. If we see a consistent improvement for either of those users, we are downloading the baseline updated model to that user. If the user has given that allowance through the, through the preference settings on their app. What it means? Means this system probably is one of the first of its kind, thanks to AI, that can learn throughout the life of use. It's not a static system. Like the fingerprint device you bought, you bought once, it's going to do some performance till the system is sensitive enough, and then you throw it away. But you can never learn and improve and make it more accurate 
throughout the life. But with the AI based system, you can do that. That's one of our patents. Now, the last unique part of our solution is that we don't only measure this raw blood glucose, blood pressure, heart rate kind of numbers. Few other devices in the market do, few of the parameters. But we work with deep clinical community. So our objective is to use the clinical algorithms, the clinical approach that the clinicians take to interpret these numbers and actually understand the state and trend of different chronic diseases. For example, it could be diabetes, it could be hypertension, it could be different kinds of cardiac arrhythmia, etc. So right now, by the way, every single such detection and, 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 and diagnosis is an FDA matter. So you can't take everything all at once. We are now taking the diabetes to FDA. In summary, we are trying to come up with a completely non-invasive wearable CGM and trying to create the first ever massive repository of physiological data from daily life science. And we are, you know, our, our roadmap supported by good clinical research. Currently, we are highly focused on driving execution for production solution to revenue by the second quarter of next year. And we are conducting multi-site clinical trials and push forward the revenue data clearance by the, by the end of next year. So with that, I'm going to conclude the talk here and I'm going to show up a simple user interface that our prototype shows. So in the middle, you see a simple uh, basic watch face that gives you time and all the information. You swipe left and you get to other basic apps, which we did not implement on the prototype, but in the production we will have, like your calculator, weather, location, etc. On the right is our own face, which is multiple physiological parameters, heart rate, oxygen saturation, and blood glucose, etc. Color coded from green to yellow to orange to red, meaning how you are, in which range you fall. You can touch on any of them, that's if touched on the heart rate, you get a color coded window of six hours. And with the, with, the, with the dots, you can actually see, are you mostly in the green zone for the last six hours, or are you going up and down? What's going on? So now, I would like to connect my phone uh, and show the, the phone on the, or right here. Okay. okay, so this is our user interface, again, the prototype. And you can see that on the dashboard, we see our current numbers. On the bottom, you see there is a calibrate option where you can take your reference numbers and send to cloud and calibrate your parameters. What I'm going to do, I'm going to do an on-demand measure. So the device measures all your parameters passively every few minutes, but you can also do an on-demand measure. Let's say I clicked on it. So the measurement started. In one minute, I'm going to get my numbers. Disclaimer, the blood glucose and blood pressure what we have embedded on the, on the prototype today are simplified algorithms. Our actual more sophisticated deep learning algorithms are offline now, ongoing going through training and data collection. So those will be up and out in three, four months. You might see those two numbers are a bit off, who knows? But in the end, what I'm trying to show here is the actual functionality. How this kind of a system can simplify a user's life who is probably going through one or more chronic diseases in his life. So at this point, since it's going through the numbers, I can even start taking questions. Thank you so much. I think there's a lot of questions here, so we have a question here. Yeah. Hi, I'm uh, Nils uh, from Nectarin Health. We're also building a wearable, but for elderly care mostly. Uh, what kind of better life are you getting out of this device? And how are you going to treat, for example, sleep collection if you have to charge it at night? Sure. So, so by the way, I got these results also. My blood glucose number didn't come out because I was probably I had an error. So it has episodes where it doesn't report if there is an error. I can trigger another measurement, but my heart rate is 100. I'm speaking a lot. <laughs> understandable. My oxygen, you know, respiration is 18. Also understandable. Talking for 20 minutes. Uh, oxygen saturation is 96 percent. Not bad. I don't want to drink now. Alcoholic <laughs> drinks will bring it down. So that's how it's pretty much how it is. So to answer your question, the prototype device is showing about two days. 
but in production we are trying to enhance to about four to five days. On top of that, we are trying to bring in a, a solar charging system so that you never have to really, you know, really have to take it off. You can take it off anytime you want, but if you don't want to take it off, the solar charging will do the charging itself. So you don't have to do that. And you had a second question too. No, that was it. Okay. Thank you. There's another question over there. Thank you. I mean, having a journalist, uh, I have a question about the disorders you show on the right side, um, which are drawn out of the data which we are collecting. Is the interpretation of the disorders, does it require a GP to be involved together with the patient? Uh, no, because um, we are working in consultation with the clinical community in, in, in coming up with those mapping. So the, the clinical algorithms are coming from the clinical community. So we are implementing them as a, as a solution and we will take it through the regulatory clearance in different countries like the US FDA or CE. And once we pass those, we don't need a GP to interpret that because it has gone through the regulatory process itself. Um, I think we have time for one more question, and then um, I think that yeah, it's lunch time so that people can come and talk sure, to you. Sure, sure, absolutely. I'm a physician. I'm completely believe on biosensors, uh, but regarding the blood sugar monitoring, what is the current level of your MAR value? Right. So what is the, the error yeah. level? So uh, it's a little longer answer, and, and let me take that, you know, probably a minute to answer that. I'm about 20% off right now. And let me tell you this, the sensor that I'm using is already a commercially available existing sensor. Not the best for blood glucose measurement, we know that. So right now our goal is to use a commercially available sensor to make it as accurate through the power of the algorithm as possible. Then, and this will be targeted to the broader consumer market for the healthy segment not for the diabetic segment. There's still a lot of use case for healthy and the pre-diabetic people to learn from this multi-physiological parameter uh, approach. But then from a medical device perspective, we will, we will actually, have, we are under, undergoing research coming up with our own sensor, which will actually take it to like 10 to 15% error margin, which is the FDA norm. And that will, you know, stand against an existing CGM on the market. Fantastic. Hello, Deep. Thank you so much. Uh, you can ask me questions at lunchtime. I'm assuming you're going to be available. So thank you very much. Thanks for having me.